Sure, I want to pick that up. The accused doesn't know any lawyers. The federal court tossed it into our lap. The bar committee took a vote. You're the unanimous choice. It was important to us. In Bridge of Spies, Alan Alda plays an attorney working with the U.S. government during the Cold War. He has a story career, of course, of playing doctors, politicians, and military men. But another true passion he has is science. The Alan Alda Center for Communicating Science sponsors a competition called the Flame Challenge. The goal is to get scientists to explain familiar yet complex concepts to 11-year-olds. Alan Alda joins us from New York. Great to have you on the show. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me on. Well, you know, obviously this, the, you know, the center and, and science in general is a passion for you. I have to ask when that began. How old were you when you, when you turned on to science? I, you know, I don't know. I, I, from the time I was about six, I was making, I was doing experiments in, in, in our house. I was mixing my mother's face powder and toothpaste <laughs> to see if I could get something to blow up. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I, you know, for, to be able to do this, and it's, it's so widespread now, um, to help people understand scientists, to get scientists involved. Tell me, you know, the moment of you deciding to start the Communicating Center in the first place, because I understand you were hosting a show. I hosted a science program on public television in the States called the Scientific American Frontiers. And I had, I, I must have interviewed about 700 scientists. And they weren't real interviews. They were just conversations where I was trying to understand their work, really, truly understand it. So I wouldn't leave them alone if I didn't get it. And it, it, it was just an ordinary conversation. And I realized that they were very warm and available and understandable because of the conversational nature of it. And I thought, what if there's not somebody standing there drawing this warmth out of them? Is it possible to train scientists to communicate that, that communicatively uh, all by themselves? And I thought, I bet if we taught them improvisation, that would open them up. And, and it I did. experimented with some scientists. And yeah. it does. And now we've got, we've got 13 affiliated universities and medical schools around the United States. And we're, we're teaching thousands of scientists and doctors to communicate better. So tell me about the flame challenge. Well, I, I, it's a contest I started about five years ago. To, to solve this problem that I experienced when I was 11 years old, I asked a teacher, what's a flame? What's going on in there? And she said, oxidation. And that, that was it. <laughs> That's all she said. And I didn't know. I, it was just another word for it. You know, it's like I, a, a flame. Well, that's Fred. You know, that's just another <laughs> name. So, so I, I, the first contest was to get scientists around the world to come up with an explanation of what a flame is so that an 11-year-old would understand it. And 11-year-olds all over the world are the judges of this contest. So, so the scientists now this year, but sorry, what? Yeah, no, 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 I just, I just find it amazing that 11-year-olds are not only part of this and getting this passion, but they, but they actually judge. What's the, what's the reaction when you see them doing this? They're so good at judging. They're really serious about it. They, the, one of the most common complaints they have is they want more information. <laughs> one, one kid said, one kid said I, you know, it's good to be entertaining, but you don't have to be silly. <laughs> he said, you know, af after all, we're 11, we're not seven. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> so the kids are really good at it and they, and they it's a, it turns out to be a good educational experience for the kids because they have to get familiar with the whole of substance of the questions so they can judge the answers well and they love it but it turns out that the real reason i started it was to help scientists see what it's like to have to communicate at such a plain spoken level not to dumb it down we don't want scientists to dumb this down we want them to be clear and vivid, you know, so something that would engage the kids. And we've so far got uh, scientists from all over the world, hundreds of scientists around the world uh, are sending in submissions, either on video or written, very short. They can get the information about what, what the protocol is by uh, going to yeah. flamechallenge.org. And teachers still have until January to sign up kids sign up their classrooms and the kids just love it. One classroom said, 
I wish we could learn everything this way. <laughs> It's just and such I a wish, great concept. I wish the scientists would explain. I know, it just works out so great. I wish the scientists would explain everything this way, you know, so we can all understand it. If an 11-year-old can get it, I can get it. <laughs> I love that your passion for this. It's just amazing to be able to talk to you, and thank you kindly for sharing with us this morning. Thanks so much. Nice to talk to you. We'll have a link, by the way, to the Flame Challenge. That'll be on our website, canadaam.ctvnews.ca.